What's up guys, my name's Stu, and today we're going to be looking at my canon-inspired next generation era theme build. Not long ago, I put out a general guide to canon-inspired theme builds like this. You probably remember this because a lot of you were really into it, so we're going to keep milking this trend for all it's worth. That first video was just a general guide. This video is going to be the first of several build videos that gives you a more closer look at what I'm actually using on these builds. While I'll be using the Legendary Galaxy class for this build video, you'll be able to adapt this to pretty much anything from the next generation era. Like I said in the guide video, it's really just a matter of adapting to the specialization seating. Don't worry, I'll be sure to offer suggestions for that in the additional notes section of this video. But yeah, let's get to it. Now, as I said, I'm using this build on the Legendary Galaxy, but this build can be easily adapted to pretty much anything for the TNG era, because at its core, it's really just a beam overload build. The main difference is I am sacrificing some of the more meta pieces of gear for items that are more authentic looking to the TV shows and movies. The first example of that is that, as you can see, I'm not using the Dark Matter Torpedo, which is actually a little shocking to me because I'm pretty sure I have used the Dark Matter Torpedo in every single build video I have ever made. Well, except for the turret builds, but I didn't put a torpedo in those. What I am using is the Prolonged Engagement Photon Torpedo. I'm using this one for two reasons. One, its animation looks like a standard photon torpedo, which is what the torpedoes in the next generation looked like. And even though it doesn't actually have the wide mod, this is a wide angle torpedo, meaning it has a firing arc of 180 degrees. That's going to be especially useful on this ship, because since it has a 4-4 weapons layout, I've set it up as a broadside build, meaning most of my damage output is going to be focused to my sides rather than the front of my ship. This torpedo, along with its full set, are available in the Phoenix Prize store in the Very Rare section. For the energy weapons, I am mostly using beam arrays, because as I said, this is a broadside setup, and because I feel like beam arrays are a bit more authentic to the shows. You really don't see a lot of Starfleet ships using dual beam banks, so I would probably still be doing this even on a ship with a 5-3 weapons layout. Obviously, there are exceptions to this, but that's not what this video is about. Standard phasers are going to look the most like the phasers you see in the next generation era, but I'm using agony phasers because they look the same and they have a better proc. Standard phasers have a chance to disable a random subsystem on an enemy target, while agony phasers have a chance to totally disable said target, and also have some additional damage over time. Though while agony phasers are more beneficial to your damage, they're also going to be more expensive because they are lockbox weapons, whereas standard phasers you can get pretty much anywhere like episode rewards, the crafting system, your fleet starbase, you got options there. Now I've also mixed in a few unique weapons with these phasers. First is the prolonged engagement phaser. This phaser has a unique ability that allows it to buff its own damage and haste during combat. It also looks the same as a standard phaser, so it still fits the theme. The prolonged torpedo actually has a similar ability as well, which is why they are a part of a console set. The two-piece bonus is just a small reduction to the recharge rate of your bridge officer abilities, but this can be kind of helpful if you're relying on Boimler effect for your bridge officer cooldowns. You don't want to rely solely on Boimler effect for beam overload. The next unique weapon is the Terran Task Force Phaser from the Terran Task Force Reputation. Now, this one is here entirely because it is a very powerful weapon, because its damage increases as your target's hull decreases. Now, it does look and sound a little different than standard phasers, so it does break the theme a little bit, but really it's close enough where it's kind of hard to tell the difference from the others. So I decided to keep this weapon on the build. However, if you find the difference noticeable enough that it bothers you, then you can swap in another standard or agony phaser beam array. And the last unique weapon on here is the Trilithium Enhanced Omni Phaser Beam. This weapon is here because one, it has the standard phaser animation, so it looks the part, but mostly because it has a unique proc that gives it a chance to increase the firing cycle haste of all of my energy weapons. It's also part of a set, which I am using the console from to give me access to the two-piece bonus, which is giving my energy weapons a persistent 5% haste buff, plus a little bit of flight speed. Next is my usual setup for an energy weapon build. The Protomatter Deflector from the Fleet Colony for its buff to crit chance and crit severity. The Engine from the Competitive Reputation for its speed buffs, which is really helpful on a big ship like this. A Deuterium Stabilized Warp Core for its reduced weapons power cost. Non-engineers could also benefit from the Terran Task Force Warp Core, because that increases the capacity of your weapon subsystem. You could also go with a Fleet Plasma Integrated Warp Core from the Fleet Spire. It doesn't have quite as much weapons power cost reduction as the Deuterium Stabilized Core, but it does have some other really great features on it. There are several of these available at the Fleet Spire, just make sure you get the one with Amp and Weapons Cap. And lastly, the Discovery Reputation Shield for its damage buff against enemy shields. For the devices, again, pretty standard for my energy weapon builds. Energy Amplifier for the bonus damage to my energy weapons. Deuterium Surplus for the speed and turn rate buff. This is really handy if your evasive maneuvers is still on cooldown. Reactive Armor Catalyst in case I need a quick heal. Kobayashi Maru Transponder for the random buffs. And Red Matter Capacitor for the buff to all my power levels. And because I couldn't think of anything else to put here. I don't really use this a lot because it triggers a shared cooldown with the Reactive Armor Catalyst and the Energy Amplifier. But with five device slots, we're kind of spoiled for choice here. 
Now, because this is a canon-inspired build, I didn't want to use any consoles that have any big, crazy abilities that have visuals like you never saw on the show. You never really saw Starfleet ships firing off big plasma tornadoes or triggering spatial anomalies on a regular basis, so pretty much all of these consoles are focused around buffing my weapons, either through a passive or an activated ability. First is a console I know you guys have seen a lot on this channel, Lorca's Custom Fire Control from the Discovery Reputation. Even without its set bonuses, this is still a very powerful console thanks to its crit chance buff, which is almost 2% higher than the vulnerability locators, and the buff to your weapons power setting and shield penetration are also pretty nice. Next is a simulated module, which you're also probably familiar with. This comes from the Omega Task Force reputation, and is here because of its buffs to crit chance, crit severity, and weapons power setting. Zero Point Energy Conduit comes from the Romulan reputation, and is also here for its crit chance buff. The subsystem power buff isn't bad either, but 2.4 really isn't a lot. This is mainly here for the crit chance, which really you can never have enough of. Next is Reinforced Armaments, which comes from the episode Beyond the Nexus. On its own, this console really isn't worth much. The power transfer rate is kind of helpful on an energy weapon build, but the buffs to hull cap and hull restoration really aren't big enough to make any difference whatsoever. This is really just here for its set bonus with the Trilithium Omnibeam, which is buffing my weapon's haste and my flight speed. Next is a console you've probably seen quite a bit on this channel, the Enhanced Plasma Manifold off of the Tier 1 Oberth Light Science Vessel. What this console does is give me a significant buff to my non-weapons power subsystems. On its own, that's not very impressive, but when paired with certain starship traits, it actually becomes pretty helpful, but more on that when I get to the starship traits. Actually, I've talked about this strategy multiple times on this channel, so if you already know what I'm talking about, drop a top hat emoji in the comment section. I'm kind of curious to see how many of you already know. Now we're getting into some of the more pricey consoles. First up, the Domino off the Bajoran Interceptor. Now, technically this is still a free-to-play console because it is from an old event ship, so if you completed that event, you already have this console on your whole account. If you did not, you can only get that through the Phoenix Prize Store, which is still technically free-to-play, but the drop rates for those epic tokens make this really difficult to obtain. And even then, ships out of the Phoenix Prize Store are only single-character unlocks. Anyway, this console is here because of its activated abilities, impressive buffs to bonus damage and firing cycle haste, both of which are very important stats to this sort of build. Next is the famous DPRM off the Atlas Prototype Dreadnought. If you know what this console does, its reason for being here is pretty obvious. And that's because of its click abilities, massive buff to bonus damage. The whole regen buff is pretty nice too if you're in a situation where you're taking a lot of damage. And now for the two low-buy consoles, Bioneural Infusion Circuits because it has the best crit severity buff of any console in the game, and the Tachyo Kinetic Converter for its own buffs to crit chance and crit severity. The turn rate buff is also going to be very helpful on a ship as big as the Galaxy class. I know these last four consoles can be pretty pricey or hard to get, so I'll offer some budget alternatives in the additional notes section of the video. Honestly, I could probably make a whole other video for budget alternatives for consoles, that way I wouldn't have to do this kind of explainer in every build video. Actually, that's a good idea, I should write this down. Useful consoles for various build types. There we go, it's on the list. Anyway, to wrap up the consoles, in the tactical slots, I've got a bunch of vulnerability locators to buff my phaser damage and my critical chance, which come from the Spire Fleet Holding. My skill tree has not changed at all recently, it's still very tactical heavy. I'll give you a moment to pause so you can get a better look at what skills I'm using, but if you want an even better look and a more in-depth explanation into what each skill does and why I'm using them, go check out my skill tree guide video. My captain specializations are still pretty standard for my weapons-based builds, so that's Intel Officer for my primary to gain access to space flanking, and Temporal as my secondary to gain access to Entropic Rider. Next up are the personal space traits. First is Adaptive Offense, which is a crit chance buff that turns into a crit severity buff and then back. Context is for Kings for the bonus damage for every time you're not getting shot at, though if you're more interested in solo play, I would swap this out for something else that increases your damage. Because if you're playing alone, you're guaranteed to be the one being shot at, in which case this turns into a damage resistance buff. Symbiotic Ice, which adds 6% of your beam weapon damage as additional cold damage, 6% might not sound like a lot, but it's pretty decent for being a personal trait. Fleet Coordinator for the bonus damage buff based on your team size. This does include yourself, so even if you are playing alone, that's still a 2% bonus damage buff. Innocuous for the buff to crit severity and reduction to threat generation. Inspirational Leader for a chance at a stacking buff to most of my starship skills. Intel Agent Attaché to lower the cooldowns of my captain's abilities. Superior Beam Training for the bonus damage buff to my beam weapons. Terran Targeting Systems for the buff to crit severity. Unconventional systems to help lower the cooldowns of my universal consoles every time I use a control ability, and the Boimler effect to help reduce the cooldown of my bridge officer abilities. I know Boimler effect is pretty expensive being a low buy store purchase, so don't worry, I'll go over how to set up this ship for an Ox to Bat build in the additional notes section. And now for the starship traits. First up is Emergency Weapons Cycle off the Arbiter Battlecruiser. 
Every time I use emergency power to weapons, this cuts my weapons power cost in half and increases my firing cycle haste of my energy weapons by 20%. This has for a long time been considered a must-have starship trait for energy weapon builds. Next, I have improved critical systems. Every time I use an emergency power bridge officer ability, I gain a buff to critical chance and critical severity. This is one of the rewards from the Temporal Agent Recruitment event. I'm mostly just using this one because I have two Emergency Power Bridge Officer abilities, and it's a nice budget trait that I wanted to show off in action. Though really, I probably should have used the best Diplomat here instead, because I am also using Onboard Dilithium Recrystallizer. Remember earlier when I was talking about Enhanced Plasma Manifold, and how it pairs with a Starship trait? This is that trait. What this does is every time I use an Engineering ability, I get a 10% bonus damage buff for every non-weapons power subsystem I have maxed out. So with the help of Enhanced Plasma Manifold, I'm able to get the full 30% bonus damage buff out of this trait. This trait comes from the Infinity Lockboxes, but isn't attached to a starship, so it's easy to get on the exchange. I mentioned the Best Diplomat earlier, which comes off of the legendary Miracle Worker Constitution, because it does pretty much the same thing as Onboard Dilithium Recrystallizer, except it's only triggered off of Beam Fire at Will or Beam Overload. So it actually would have fit well here, and I kind of regret not using it. Next up is Overpowered and Overgunned off of the legendary Defiant. This trait is very similar to Emergency Weapons Cycle. It also lowers your weapons power cost and buffs your firing cycle haste, though it's not quite as powerful as Emergency Weapons Cycle, but the two traits stack, so it's good to have both. Next is Super Weapon Ingenuity off the Zindi Adaleth Dreadnought. If you're going to set this up as a Beam Overload build, you definitely want this trait, because it extends the duration of Beam Overload by 5 seconds, allowing you to keep it up pretty much 100% of the time. Though if you'd rather use Fire at Will, but you totally could, it still fits the canon theme, I would recommend Entwined Tactical Matrices instead off the Gagarin Miracle Worker Battle Cruiser. And last up is Terran Goodbye off the Mirror Warship, which gives me a stacking buff to crit chance and accuracy every time I kill an enemy. Now, I know some of these traits are more expensive than others, which is why I recently made a video about alternative starship traits for energy weapon builds. It might help you in finding a more affordable replacement for some of these traits. In the Space Reputation traits, first we have Advanced Targeting System for the Crit Severity buff, Precision for the Crit Chance buff, Tyler's Duality for another crit chance buff based on your hull capacity, which this ship has a lot of, Magnified Firepower for the bonus damage buff to my weapons, and Chrono Capacitor Array to help with my bridge officer cooldowns. Though if you're using Ox to Bat or one of those Borg Duty officers, I would swap this out for Controlled Countermeasures, which gives you bonus damage when firing on a target under a control effect. Now for the bridge officer stations. First in the Universal slot, we've got Torpedo Spread to help buff my torpedo. In the tactical seat, I've got Chemocyte Lace Weaponry 1 for the chance at some additional radiation damage with my weapons fire, Attack Pattern Beta 1 for the debuff, Beam Overload 3 to buff my beam weapons, though as I said earlier, you could swap this out for Fire at Will 3 if you prefer. In the Engineering slash Command seat, first I have Overwhelm Emitters to help drain enemy shields, Directed Energy Modulation, which gives my energy weapons a small amount of shield and armor penetration. I'm also using a Duty Officer that buffs this even further, more on that in a bit. Concentrate Firepower 3 to further buff my torpedo, or really that of anyone on the team, just depends on who shoots first. Either way, this means anyone on your team running a torpedo build will love you. And Call Emergency Artillery 3, which summons in three artillery vessels that fly toward your target, dealing an AoE kinetic damage all around them. For Federation characters, they look like Defiant class ships, which I felt gave this ship a really great Dominion War vibe. I'll go over Bridge Officer ability suggestions for the other specializations in the additional notes section, in case you're wanting to put a TNG era themed build on a ship that doesn't have command seating. On the Lieutenant Commander engineering seat, the ship has a lot of engineering seating. First is Emergency Power to Engines 1 for the speed buff, Emit Unstable Warp Bubble. This one is only here because it is considered a control effect, and therefore will trigger unconventional systems, meaning it'll help reduce the cooldowns of my universal consoles. And Emergency Power to Engines 3 for the bonus damage to my energy weapons, and because it triggers Emergency Weapon Cycle. In the Science Seat, I have Jam Targeting Sensors 1 and Tractor Beam 2. These two are here because they also trigger unconventional systems. In the Duty Officers, first I have 23 of 47. Anytime I use a Tactical Ability, it gives me a chance to improve the maximum hull of the whole team. And every time I use a Command Ability, I get a 30% chance to increase my Critical Chance. Though obviously I'm only using this one because I have Command Seating on this ship. There's one of these Borg Duty Officers for each specialization, so which one I would want to use would depend on what ship I'm using. Not to say that you need to use one of these Borg Duty Officers. They can be pretty expensive, so go with what you can afford. Next are a bunch of Projectile Officers. Every time I fire a torpedo, they give me a chance to increase my crit chance or crit severity, depending on the doff. Now, there are energy weapon versions of these duty officers, but for a beam overload build, the projectile officers are actually better because beam overload cuts your firing rate in half. Though if you're using fire at will instead, you can go with either one. Next is an energy weapon officer that has a chance to increase my shield penetration every time I use beam overload. Though again, if you're using fire at will, you're going to want to replace this. 
And lastly, Mariam Francis Dulmer, who reduces my weapons power cost every time I use directed energy modulation. Now, I said earlier I would talk about a few things. First, suggestions on setting up for an aux to bat build if you're not using Boimler effect. Obviously that involves making room for three technician duty officers. If it were me, I would ditch Dulmer, the shield penetration doff, and one of the projectile officers. If you don't have one of those Borg duty officers, then keep the third projectile guy. Now, as I said earlier, this build can be adapted to pretty much anything from the next generation era. You just need to adjust to the specialization seating. If you have a miracle worker seat, you probably want to work in narrow sensor bands and mixed armament synergy. Both of these have very nice bonus damage buffs. For intel seating, you'll definitely want override subsystem safeties. Its buff to power levels is really nice for an energy weapon build. Viral impulse burst can also be useful because it also triggers unconventional systems. For temporal seating, you definitely want recursive shearing. This is a very hard-hitting ability with a lot of damage potential. Heisenberg Amplifier, Chronometric Inversion Field, and Timeline Collapse are also very useful as unconventional systems triggers. For pilot seating, I've been doing something kind of interesting. It requires two seats of pilot team, the personal trait fresh from r and and synthetic good fortune off of the Tier 6 Equinox. I'm not going to go into any more detail about it here, because you'll get to see it when I do the Cannon Defiant build, which won't be the next video, but it'll be the one after that. Now I said earlier I would talk about some budget alternatives to the more expensive consoles I'm using. There's the M6 computer console, off the Tier 3 Temporal Escort. There's also the Temporal Trajectory Shifter, off the Tier 6 Ambassador. Both of these are also really good for buffing haste, which is always good for an energy weapon build, especially beam overload. Anything that buffs your crit chance, crit severity, or your weapons damage would also be a good substitute. If you're using a large ship like the Galaxy of the Sovereign class, I know a lot of you are going to be tempted to use an RCS accelerator to buff your turn rate. That's fine, just make sure it's not one of those stupid crafted ones. I'm talking about the conductive RCS accelerators. These things are entirely overrated, they are not worth using. I say this because there is a better alternative. A Bellum RCS from the Discovery Reputations Dilithium store. People think the conductive RCSs are actually better because they give additional turn rate, but you only get that additional turn rate if you use a heal ability. And even then, it only lasts for 15 seconds. They also get a random modifier with an additional stat buff. But most of these modifiers are completely useless, like damage resistance to a specific energy weapon type, or a small buff to one of your subsystems. Plus, just because you have that extra turn rate, your inertia rating is still the same, so you're still going to be sliding around all over the place. You're just going to be spinning in smaller circles while you do it. Trust me, the crit chance from your Bellum RCS is going to be more beneficial to your DPS. Okay, that should cover everything. Now let's move on to the ISC, and then the parse.
273k DPS. This is actually a bit higher than I expected it to do. Though that's probably because I didn't have Augie in here hogging all the DPS. As you can see, most of my phaser damage came from Beam Overload 3. That's to be expected, it's a Beam Overload build. Symbiotic Ice did over 9k. Like I said, that's pretty good for a personal trait. I did 21k with pet damage. That's pretty impressive considering the only pets on this build are going to be the artillery vessels from Call Emergency Artillery. Yeah, 18k with those. The anti-time thing is a reputation trait. No idea why Tactical Cube is under here, but apparently it gave me 2k. The combat log probably misread something. I always say if I can get more than 100k with a goofy theme build, I'm happy. And honestly, with my track record, I should probably up that to 200k. So yeah, that is my next generation era theme build. I hope it helps you in creating your own. Now, because this is just a theme build, it can be pretty open to interpretation, so don't feel like you need to stick to the exact letter of everything I've said in this video. In the end, it's your theme build. Do what you want with it. Anyway, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I know you've heard it a million times before, but it is YouTube and it really does help the channel, and I do appreciate it. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.